let me just give you a brief um, background and bio for Rocio uh, Lopez Matthews. She is the uh, Director of Early Learning Partnerships for PBS SoCal and KCET. She has over 15 years of experience as a family and youth advocate for organizations like MALDEF, Upward Bound, Disney Theatrical Group, and Common Sense Media. And she brings her ma background as a teaching artist, as well as her experience developing programming for families with young children. And she's passionate about going beyond translations and transcreating content for Spanish speaking families. Uh, and we also have with us Dr. Rosemary Miller, who is the Senior Director of Early Learning at PBS SoCal and KCET. In her role, uh, she oversees the organization's programming and initiatives for families and children from birth through eight. And she has over a decade of experience as an elementary school teacher, curriculum developer, and early literacy researcher. Um, so please join us in welcoming them. And Rocio and Rosemary, I'll, throw, I'll uh, pass it to you to go ahead and do some further bio information. This sounds good. Thank you so much, Yvonne and Dahlia and the whole QSLA team for inviting us. Um, this is really, really exciting. We did the Spanish version of this exact training last week, and it was so lovely to meet this wonderful network of early learning providers that are part of the Quality Start LA group and community. And so um, I'm excited for tonight. So happy to be here with my colleague. Um, here, let me move on to a quick agenda. We're going to do uh, more in-depth introductions. Um, we're going to then do an icebreaker together. And I should let you know that you can expect for this workshop, this virtual workshop, although it is virtual, uh, there will be interactive components where I'm going to ask you all to volunteer, to unmute yourself, to talk to each other in breakout rooms. So um, you can expect that, but like Yvonne said, um, if you need to be in the background or prefer to keep your camera off, that's completely okay. Uh, but if you wanna be involved and interact, please, I, I would love to hear your voices and know more about you. Um, next, uh, you know, we're gonna move on to talk about early math and what we know so far about early math. We're gonna do a musical activity. There may be some singing. So if you like to sing, be ready. Uh, and then we're going to dive into some of the tools that I'm here to share, that I'm here to promote, um, including some activities, some games, some songs. And they're all part of this thing that is called the Family Math Toolkit. My colleague, Dr. Rosemary Miller, is going to give you a tour of the Family Math Toolkit so that you leave today's session feeling like you have everything at your fingertips. Everything that we shared, you can take them and implement them at your centers with the families that you serve. And then I have a special invitation for you all uh, to not let this be the end of this conversation, but to continue this conversation and discussion and training um, at a later date in person with each other. So all that is coming. That's the agenda. That's what we're going to be doing today. And again, going to introduce myself a little more. I love the bio. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, uh, I mean, all I could say is that as director of early learning partnerships, this is what I get to do. I get to partner with amazing organizations like Quality Start LA and Child Care Alliance of Los Angeles and make something like tonight happen, which is an absolute pleasure and privilege for me is to share with all of you the things that we get to create and develop uh, at PBS and at PBS SoCal. And now I'll pass it on to my colleague and my amazing team leader, uh, Dr. Rosemary Miller. You Thank want to start? You. Um, hi, it's nice to see everyone. I'm so thrilled to be here. Um, you know, I've been at PBS SoCal for about 18 months now, and most of my career leading up to that point was as a K through three teacher. And I'm very much of the mindset of once a teacher, always a teacher. It's where I feel at home and getting to share this work and how it can be used with young children and families is the best part of my job. So thank you for joining us today. I'll start by telling you a little bit about who we are and why we're here and why we make this stuff. Um, so let's start with our mission. So our mission is simply put to use the power of media for the public good. And while you may connect with PBS SoCal in a variety of ways, maybe you watch News Hour or Frontline, or you like British dramas and you watch All Creatures Great and Small, today what we're really here to connect with you around is how to use media for the public good, specifically with early learners, and to support young children and their families. 
we really see media as a tool that can be used to open a world of possibilities. So everything we share today is guided by a set of principles. Our content and resources are always free, bilingual in English and Spanish. They are standards based and aligned. And so for family math that we're going to talk about today, that's aligned to the California Preschool Foundations, the Head Start Early Learning Outcomes Framework, and the Common Core State Standards. It's backed by research. We um, are a children's media company, but because we are Federal Department of Education funded, a significant portion of our funding has to go to research and evaluation to ensure that anything we create is tied to learning outcomes and is beneficial for young learners. And then last but not least, multi-platform. So we aim to be wherever kids, parents, educators, providers, caregivers, anywhere, wherever they are. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what multi-platform means in a little bit. So we leverage the trusted brand and the characters kids and families know and love, Sesame Street, Daniel Tiger, or my household right now with a four-year-old and a 20-month-old, it's all about Don Quixote, uh, to connect with families on the ground through workshops and outreach events with community partners, QSLA being one of them. We also develop curriculum and programs to meet the needs we are seeing in our communities. And one of those programs we are here to talk about today is Family Math. So Rocio, I'll pass it off to you. Amazing, thank you so much, Rosemary. Uh, yes, Rosemary is definitely in the world of early learning uh, professionally, but also in her home. And I also forgot to mention that I am also the mom of an 18 month old toddler who is already I'm just amazed at how her math brain is already thinking more on that to come. So uh, I would love to invite all of you to join a WhatsApp group that I created specifically and only for this session today. So after this hour and a half with you, don't worry, you'll never hear from me again. But I wanted uh, the opportunity to send you everything, uh, all the resources that we're going to share. I wanted to send them to you right away in real time so that you have them at the palm of your hand right uh right away as, as I share it. And I also wanted to model for you the way that um, a, a way that we can share these resources with families. A lot of families are on WhatsApp or on other text services. Uh, and so I would love for as many of you to join, but it is completely optional. And all the resources will also be shared by the Quality Start team at the end of the session. But if you want to be a part of, you know, this, uh, again, this modeling of how we can just share resources as we talk about them, please uh, point your camera to the QR code, join the group. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and also put the, I'm also going to add the direct link on the chat if you want to, if you prefer to click on that. Give me one second. All right, and I see a lot of you already joining the WhatsApp group. Thank you. Okay, one second, I'm just, I couldn't find the chat, so I'm just gonna add the code right here on the chat. I just added it, so you can click on the link if that's easier for you or send the link to your phone. Uh, or again, I'm going to share the slide. So you can just point your camera to the QR code. And this is a really interesting, again, I'm really interested in how, how do we take the resources that we're, that we, that we learn about, oh, excuse me, sorry about that. How do we take, uh, you know, resources, not just the ones that we're going to share today, but maybe other resources that we come across, you know, at a conference or at a professional development, and how do we make it very practical easy and accessible, obviously for the families, but also for you all. You are the ones that are introducing so many of the resources um, with families. And you are all you are the ones that are making them practical and accessible and fun. You are the gatekeepers really to the community that we serve. And you know, we know that you're only going to share the things that you love. And so we want to make it easy for you all to share those things. Uh, as we, as you continue to to join the group, and thank you, I see so many of you on the group already. I'm excited to to share with you some of these really fun links. Um, as we do that, I'm going to move on to the second part of this um, first activity, and I just wanted to ask you all if you can, in the chat, 
just write down either one word or a phrase or a thought. What are your first impressions or thoughts when you hear early math? And as I move on to the next prompt, just want us to keep kind of, you know, having those uh, that idea in mind, right? What are our first impressions of math? And let's think about also, you know, what how might families think about math? What do they think about when we say, we're going to do math with your two-year-old, with your three-year-old? What might that feeling be for them, right? Want us to always like to make ourselves, uh, put ourselves in the shoes of the, of the parents and the families uh, that we serve. Thank you everyone for sharing. All right, now I'm going to ask us to dig a little deeper and go into our feelings. And maybe... Not how you feel now, but think about maybe your upbringing when you were, you know, a child. How did you feel when you thought about math? And at the count of three, I want us all to share an emoji that represents how we felt about math growing up. This could be when you were a little kid, like five years old, or maybe 10 years old, or maybe 15. Just something that sticks out to you. And I'm going to stop the share so that we could all see our emojis. Thank you so much, everybody, for digging deep. Now I'm going to ask you to dig a little bit deeper. And there's a whole purpose around this. I promise you it's all leading somewhere. But I really, really want you to now dig deep into your memory bank. I'm going to pull up the prompt. And uh, in just a second, we're going to go into small breakout rooms. And I would love for you all to share a memory that you have from your childhood about math. It could be a positive memory or it could be a negative memory. And I just want you to take one minute each to share that memory. Just something that stands out. It could have been classroom based. Actually, no, uh, to share a childhood memory about that. No, yeah, that's fine. It could have been uh, in the classroom or it could have been uh, in the home. Thank you everyone Thank you. for sharing with each other, for going deep into your, your memories, um, some from what I could tell, some had positive memories, some had some not so positive memories. Um, and I wanted to take a moment um, for just maybe two or three volunteers to share their memory. And uh, I could go ahead and, and, and begin with just a very, very short memory that I have of my uncle. My dad had like nine brothers and they would always be making fun of each other. And they would they were always calling each other burros. Like you were... <laughs> Era burro, ay, compa, eres bien burro. And it was always about um, like counting and money. It's like, I don't know if they were like, like, you know, like you don't know how to count. Like you can't even count, you know, the money in your hand is burro. And I just remember like associating math with counting and money. And like, if you don't know how to do that, like you're, you're done. Estás burro. So that I don't know what that means I feel like it affected me because I've always remembered that and I didn't want to be a burra I just remember that I did not want to be a burra um would somebody else like to share a memory that they have involving math or uh yeah something from their memories we're young feel free to unmute yourself I have to say it <laughs> please do okay so I had uh, I have a great great memory from math because math is my uh, favorite subject. I love math. So uh, I even the math my math teacher was uh, the role model of uh, for me to become a teacher too. When I was young, when I was in like first grade, I said I have to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. like my t my math teacher and I was like no I have to be like her exactly like her and that uh, I don't know the way that she uh, taught us and explained everything I really love the way and even like uh, playing outside with my friends I was a teacher all the time and I was a math teacher all the time I made for them notebooks, everything. We did numbers, adding, subtracting, everything, patterning, all the things. And until now, I love it. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Tamar, for sharing that beautiful memory. What a beautiful example that is of such a positive experience 
essentially determined your lifelong commitment to education. That's yeah. not enough said right there. That's that's incredible. And I'm sure you are a study and, and so many of you here in this room are that teacher that Tamar has a memory of when she was a, a child. And you all are creating those positive experiences and moments for them that they're going to carry on. Not to be cursi, not to be corny. I just have to say that it is a beautiful thing. And, and I love how you say at a city that the that math was in a, in a sense, that was your language. That was a language that you could understand, even though you couldn't understand English, you could understand math. And I can't help but think that, you know, you have that precious memory. So you're also instilling the joy in those moments of counting with your students. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing everyone. And and uh, even to, you know, the people that shared um, in the breakout rooms, thank you all for participating. And I I still really want us to, to keep... Um, viewing the material that we're going to review today with this lens of the impact of positive experiences when it comes to math, right? Because it's going to happen. Everybody at some point gets to a level of math where it's not so easy and it's not so fun and it doesn't feel so positive. And we need that confidence that comes from the early memories that we have of math, right? That, that, that's all something that we all have the power to do and to instill in the students that we work with, but also with the families. And again, more, more to come. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'll go ahead and share the deck one more time. What do we know about early math? What is the early math research telling us, right? And I just pulled some headlines. These are headlines. If you Google early math, early math uh, for preschoolers or math for uh, two to five-year-olds, this is these are the big headlines that are coming up, Right. Why early math is just as important as early reading. The benefits of early math experiences add up. Combining math with music leads to higher test scores, according to the review of 50 years of research. Early math skills predict later academic success. The importance of early math skills for preschoolers. And I have to admit, before I was before I came to, to this field, if you would have asked me like math for preschoolers, I would not have known what that meant. I would have been like, whoa, they're they're too little, right? Aren't they aren't they too young to be doing math? And as I've been learning and training in, in this topic and working with early learning professionals and and researchers, realizing math is everywhere. Math is all the time. We're always practicing math in everything that we do. Um that's pretty much the motto of, of our program is math is everywhere. So, all right. We know that early mathematics skills are a critical predictor of children's later success. Imagine that. I mean, even that. Let's sit with that for just a second. Early math skills are a critical predictor of children's later success. Meaning if we set up the foundation for young children between the, the children in the of the age that we work with that we teach their foundations in early math what they're doing right now is a critical predictor of the rest of the years that they're you know in school the rest of their education occurs and their life children's later school success um and then, like we just said, math is everywhere. Math knowledge can develop anywhere and anytime with little insects, the roly polies, you know, in the classroom, at home with our parents, counting money, or just observing the world around us, just noticing shapes. And somebody, you know, a few people in the in the chat said sorting, right? So many early math skills, they can happen anywhere. And then this is my favorite one. This is where I, we're here. Increasing math learning opportunities in the home increases children's math knowledge. So today we're going to talk about how we could do that, how we could be, again, that the, 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 the people that bring these math learning opportunities to the families that we serve, to their home. How do we, how could we bring math learning opportunities to their hands? And for that, I'm going to give you a, <laughs> a brief example. So I told you we were going to sing today. So if you're ready to sing with me, start unmuting yourself. I'm going to sing this little paragraph. And then I'm going to make a pattern with my hands. And then I'm going to ask for some volunteers to do the same. To sing the little song 
and do some patterns with your hands. And I know you've all done this with your students, so don't get shy on me. Um, I hope there's there's a few volunteers. And just so that you all learn, learn the song, I'm going to repeat the song twice. We're going to do it in English today, but we also have the Spanish version right here on the side. All right. We're making patterns in the form of beats. We're making patterns, sounds that repeat, clap. Oh, I was going to do stomp. Clap, head, clap, head, clap, head, clap, head. We're making patterns in the form of beats. We're making patterns, sounds that repeat. Clap, head, clap, head, clap, head, clap, head. All right. Do I have a volunteer that wants to sing the little jingle and then do their own pattern? And it doesn't have to be a clap in the head. It could be shoulders, nose, shoulders, nose. It could be shake, shake, shake. shake. It could be whatever pattern you want it to be. I just want to see it. And do I have any volunteers? I'll do it, but yeah. um, because... The singing part is not my strong, so it's okay. It. No okay. problem. Um, we're making patterns in the form of beats. We're making patterns, sounds that repeat. Nose, ears, nose, ears, nose, ears. Yes, bravo! You got it. I have to ask, and I need another volunteer to sing along. I see I'll somebody. do it. Thank you for volunteering. Sing away. Okay, so we're making patterns in the form of beats. We're making patterns, sounds that repeat. Pat, 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 pat. Lovely. All those sounds. Thank you. And since we're on a roll, I'm going to ask for one more volunteer. Again, don't be shy on me. I know you do this every day with your students. I'll do it. Thank you. Okay. We're making patterns in the form of beats. We're making patterns, sounds that repeat. So clap and shoulder, clap, shoulder, clap, shoulders. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. And for that, because I got three volunteers uh, later in the session today, I'm going to share with you the track to the song. And I'm going to share with you how you can actually get your hands on the song so you can sing it and dance along with your students. But very excited. Oh, can you sing the Spanish so I can hear the tune, Guadalupe? Of course. In Spanish, it goes, Con este ritmo, hagamos un patrón. Un patrón de sonidos que se vuelve a repetir. Palmas, pizza, palmas, pizza. So it's the same melody, only one is in English and one version is in Spanish. All right, again, more to come on some songs. These are the six topics that we cover in the family math program and the family math toolkit that we're sharing with you all today. Patterns, which include what are some of the patterns? And feel free to put them in the chat or to just unmute yourselves and give me a little popcorn brainstorm. And what are some of the patterns that children between the ages of two and five are learning. What are some of the patterns? It could be, uh, a, yes? Is it A, A, B, A, and A, B, B, A, and A, B, C? Exactly, oh, I love those, yes, exactly. The, the simple repetitive patterns, that it's a sequence that repeats, Line up, big to small. They do this all the time, every day. Movement patterns. Yep. Maybe even routine, routine patterns, right? When they wake up, they get, what is the first thing they do when they get out of bed, when they start getting ready? Does the jacket come before the shirt, right? When they brush their teeth, you know, what could like, so routines, movements, big to small. I love all these. Colors. 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 Mm-hmm. Sizes day, night. They're learning so many patterns. Um, 
number sense and counting. And some of you in your memory, I mean, in, in your examples that you were sharing, were already uh, sharing some of the ways that kids are starting to count. And at a very young age, they have the capability of learning to count to really high numbers if they understand that pattern. So even patterns sometimes even helps, you know, how children learn counting. But what are some of the ways um, or some of the things that children this age uh, are learning to count? We are counting books and blocks when we're sharing. Like uh, when we're doing reading time, we count if somebody brings too many books to the floor, to the carpet, they had to count how many books everybody has and make sure everybody has equal amount of books. We do the same with blocks and toys. So, okay, so you have three toys, but she only has one. What do you think we should do to be equal, to be the same? And mm -hmm. so that's what we're doing all the time, even with the babies. Yes, absolutely. I love that. And I mean, I'm, I was shocked. My little 18 month old, she's not even two. And, you know, I always count. I'm always like, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. And just a couple of weeks ago, I'm like counting uno, dos, tres, cuatro. And she's like, cinco. I don't know if she's counting or if she just memorized the sound, but I'm like, oh, my baby's counting. But yes, <laughs> a little children they are counting they're listening to us they're observing how we're modeling counting and they're doing it as well even if they're even if they mix up the numbers sometimes even if you know they're jumping from 7 to 11 that's okay that's all part of the development of counting shapes what are some of the shapes that children 2 to 5 what are some of the shapes that they love and that you can that you can do the shapes with the bread with the plate, plate is round. Bread, you can make like uh, triangles. You can make a square. Sometimes you can cut and make rectangles. They eat, but they remember the shapes. Mm -hmm. Even the counting, you can do use the food, like mm -hmm. gummy bears. They eat. How many gummy bears do you have in your bag? Mm -hmm. It's food and uh, patterning you can do with the uh, plate, fork, plate, fork. They use the pattern and they learn it every day, like learning things yep. useful in their uh, daily life. I love how you say in their daily lives, they're learning everything based on the things that they are living, all the routines that they do. And thank you, everyone, for sharing in the chat. I see the chat going, going, going. And the reason why it's going, going, going is because you are all already experts in this. You're already doing this every single day with your with the with the students, right? What about mm -hmm. sorting? What are some of the ways that we're sorting with children or that children are learning sorting? Sorting and collecting and grouping. Toys, things. you can uh, do the uh, unifix cubes, sort the colors. Sorting by color. The younger ones, the younger ones, I always said, can you please separate the colors? Do you see the separation? Because if I say sorting, they won't understand what this sorting means. We always separate the colors. Do you see like the fruit toys, like orange? How many oranges do you have? Can oranges go all together? Apples go all together? So they are sorting. They play, but they don't understand. Then after that, they realize that it's sorting. Yes. And maybe uh, um, you're right. Sorting is not necessarily for the kids, although we want them to start learning that what they're doing. Eventually, we want them to learn that that is sorting. But maybe for the younger ones, it's, you know, we group them or we put all the ones of this color in a group, in a pile or a group. But even them doing it, even if they don't know the word, the fact that they're practicing it, they're understanding the concept of sorting and they're practicing that skill. And uh, measurement, of course, and by measurement, yes, absolutely. Standard measurements like 10 feet wide and one foot, that's a, that's more advanced, right? But what about non-standard measurement? Non-standard measurement. What are some ways that we are teaching non-standard measurement with, with children? Oh. One of the things that I do is when we do cleanup time, everything is labeled, so they put the toys where they go. Mm -hmm. 
That's so lovely. I love that. The way that we teach organization is basically sorting. Absolutely. Everything has their place. With, uh, with measurement, uh, we start with uh, the words comparison, big and small. Mm -hmm. So they're starting to learn sizes. Mm -hmm. And also uh, by height, they, you know, they stand and they look at each other and they compare their height. Although they might not uh, know how many feet, however, they they can see what the uh, the measurement as they're at their, as they're standing looking at each other, and they can say, "Oh, yeah, uh, they usually say you're bigger than I am." Yeah. So, and then they start learning the taller and shorter versus shorter, and uh, so that we do throughout the day as um as part of their routine also. That's lovely. They learn measurement by comparison, right? which is bigger, which is smaller. Thank you. And then lastly, spatial sense, which is also tricky because we're not really, we're not using the word spatial sense with kids, right? But what are some examples of words, uh, spatial sense words that we're using with young children? Those, posi those positional words like on, in between, over, under, push the chair in, behind, in front. Thank you, Marina. On top, under, around. Also words that describe certain things, the same, you know, like that big, small, round. All of those words that we almost take for granted. I definitely do. I take it for granted. I don't think that I'm practicing math when I'm saying these words. Um, but... That is absolutely math. And for young children to start to differentiate above, under, in between, to the side, around, heavy, thank you, in front of, behind, those that is all their math brain, busy, busy at work. And that's a beautiful thing. That's exactly, we want them to be thinking in those, um, in those ways. Well, I wanted to review each of these topics because I wanted to honor you all just from your involvement in the chat. The chat is going crazy. You all have so much expertise in this, right? That you do this every day. And if you didn't know that you do this every day, that you're doing early math skills, I hope you feel excited and empowered right now because you are. Your early math skills is uh, uh, are, are the, the things of, again, everyday routine that children are learning. But our goal is, is to make sure that we are uh, allow, uh, providing opportunities for families, for kids to take it home, for the words that we're practicing with them in school, for families to be able to continue that learning at home. And, and also most families are already having so much expertise in this, right? I remember, I mean, like the beautiful memories that I have when I was very little was like my mom cooking and she would cook very much with non-standard <laughs> measurement, you know, like it was just like un poquito de esto, un poquito de aquello, necesitamos tres hojas, you know, in Spanish, she was just cooking. And that's how I was like, would observe my mom and also fell in love with math is through her way of making food. And I know a lot of families um, are, you, are using their everyday experiences and routines and culture uh, in a way that practices math now the bridge for us is to make sure that they're they're doing that times two, right? Times three, times four, that they're realizing how important this is and continue to practice these, these fun things. And for that, I'm going to do another uh, activity, another exercise with you all. I'm going to play this video, but I'm going to keep it on mute. And feel free to unmute yourself. And I just want us to describe all the ways that this family is practicing math in this video. So feel free to just unmute yourself, share an observation, and I'm gonna keep the video on mute so that we can so that we can share. All the ways that this family is practicing math, all the opportunities that this dad could say a word that will be that that will be planting a seed, a math seed in these two little girls' brain. For example, yes. under the bed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Go ahead. Under. Mm -hmm. Sort. Inside. Mm -hmm. 
clothes inside the hamper. Thank you. Feel free to unmute yourselves or feel free to put it in the chat, whichever you prefer. Big pile of clothes. They can so count the, loads because they are sorting. And mm -hmm. they can count, you know, the socks or the shirts. Yes. Comparing. Yes, comparing. The whites and the colors. They also just did the in and out because they put the clothes inside the washer and then brought it out. Mm -hmm. What about the, the patterns in the shirt? Blue line, green line, blue line, green line. Yeah, it seems like they're sorting shirts from and separating them from pants and other sweaters and stuff. So that's another sorting. Mm -hmm. They're pairing the socks and also classifying them by it looks like uh, who's who's who do they belong to. So they're classifying. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So by sizes and. They're helping each other. That's great. These are daddy socks. These are mommy socks. So on. Mm -hmm. Folding one, two, three times. I love that. Thank you, Madeline. By length, by color, fabric, by texture, says Guadalupe. Thank you. What else? Oh, video's over. But thank you, everyone. <laughs> so many moments in that. Those two minutes the or three minutes or, or, or in whichever family, you know, however long they take to do laundry and involve the the kids in, in the routine or the chore and make it fun and make it engaging and have the parents practice all of those words. Right now, all, all the words that you all said included measurement words, included spatial sense words, included patterns, included counting, um, all of our early math skills. You all mentioned it and they, the, the, the possibility for families to practice math in one simple thing and to practice all of those concepts was right there. But that is our task again, is how do we take uh, the opportunities for these learning experiences? How do we provide more of that for families to engage with these? The vocabulary words sounds very fancy, right? But they're not even vocabulary words. They are everyday words. We just have to make it a point to make them um, very, very uh, um, repeat. What's the word? Make sure that we're repeating all of these words with the families um, because families make the difference and they set the tone for how children learn. All right. So the first resource that I'm going to share with you is a hands-on activity. And I'm going to show you, we only have time for one of these, but I'm going to show you the video of how to make the, I'm going to show you the full video of how to make this frog on a stick and this bird on a stick. These are stick puppets. Oh, and I'm just realizing I have the Spanish one, but that's okay. That's okay. Because for what we're about to do, we just need to make sure that we see the visual. And then I'm going to ask for a volunteer to describe in their own words, how they would describe how to make that frog or bird puppet. Thank you. 
Awesome. So do I have a volunteer that can describe how they would make the frog or the bird puppet in their own words? How would you describe either to a family or to one of your students how to make that puppet? And while we share, I'm going to pull up the QR code for the WhatsApp group. Somebody was just asking for, here it is, here's the thing. So in your own words, how would we make that frog puppet? What would we do first? Uh, I can say. So mm -hmm. you get the materials, first of all, construction paper, then you cut the shapes, what shape and uh, you cut circle and the other circle you cut semicircles two semicircles so you uh, need to have glue you need to have sticks uh, and then you glue it together and you made eyes you glue you made it ready then the last you put the sticks and you made puppet there and you introduce go. the kids all the step by step. First, when you cut the shapes, first you introduce the shapes, like what shape is this? Then the second one, you need to cut the circle to make semi-circle. It means half circles. I so love then it. after that, yes, you need to give them more like uh, detail, more clear, so they will understand what is semi-circle. Half circle, another half circle is one circle. Half circle is semi-circle. That's wonderful. And I love how you gave us that example. You make a circle and you cut it in half and that gives you two semicircles. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And once you get into, if you're actually making it, imagine all the opportunities as well, right? To say the eyes go above, the stick goes below, you turn it around and you start to introduce all of those fun words, right? Yes, more oh. details. Give them more details so it will be more clear mm -hmm. for them. I love that. So in the WhatsApp group, I just sent the PDF to this activity, which includes the materials. It includes three simple steps, but it also includes the link. If I click on the link, it takes me to that video on YouTube. That's easy to watch. And the QR code also takes you to the video. It gives you some ideas on what questions you can ask the students as you're making, uh, gives you a book recommendation, and it also gives you the link to a fun online game where they could continue practicing the topic of shapes. Um, so I want to give you, I want to let you know that in the family math toolkit that we're sharing today, we have over 30, oh my goodness, where's my tab with all of my activities? Oh, we have, if I click on activities, we have over 30 activities where kids and families can practice those early math concepts by just creating the activity and describing what they're doing with the activity. Math is going to, it's going to come easy. It's going to, you're already practicing it in, um, for each activity we have the PDF available, the video is already ready to go, and these are ready. So I just shared it right now, and actually I'm going to share it one more time because a few people just joined, and so I want to make sure that you all have this ready to go. Um, and we have over 30 from stuffed sock puppets to practice shapes to robot piñata to stick puppets, and again, we have over... 
30 of these fun hands-on activities to make with young kids. We have a homemade scale to practice, practice measurement, measuring with paperclip, and they have the detailed instructions and the tutorial videos to take. Um, you could potentially do one of these activities every week for the whole year or every two weeks for the year and practice all of these uh, early math concepts. And these are printable games that uh, are a little bit more printer friendly, right? These are very easy to print because they're already in black and white. And what's really cool about these is that these are already bilingual. So you have the English instructions on one side, you have the Spanish instructions on the other side. Uh, and we made this uh, so that kids can, you know, families can, can play these games intergenerationally, right? Um, especially for Spanish speaking families, you know, where, you know, a child can play with grandma or tío or tía and primos, and they can all play together and they already come with their little game board. This one is called Make a Pattern or Hagamos un Patrón. And it's really fun. They cut out this die, they tape it together, and then they take turns rolling the die to create some of these patterns in like a level one, level two, and level three. And so of these printable games, we have six of these on our Family Math Toolkit uh, ready to be shared. And I'm going to go ahead and share with you all in the WhatsApp group. So another thing uh, that I wanted to share with you are our uh, digital games that we have curated on the PBS Kids app and on uh, the PBS Kids website, there are so many fun games for kids that are actually educational, that are actually educational quality content for young kids. And we've actually curated uh, a lot of the games that practice math. And so the, the link is pbskids.org forward slash games forward slash math. And I'm going to share that in the chat right now. And I'm also going to send it. I'm going to send you this curated list that we have compiled. So these are the games that practice number sense and counting. These are the games that practice spatial sense and so on. And we've starred the ones that are also available in Spanish. And when you get this um, downloadable PDF, you can actually click on these links and go straight to that game. And don't worry, again, all of these resources are going to be shared to everyone. But I just want to show you how I'm copying the link directly to the WhatsApp. And now you all have it at the palm of your hand. You open that print the, the PDF and you can forward it. You can uh, download it in English or in Spanish. And you can forward it to, to the families that you work with. All right. And... One more thing, and actually we're gonna uh, go into a tour of the Family Math Toolkit, and for that I'm gonna pass it over to Rosemary, and she's gonna take you now to, if you know, I sent you some of the assets directly on the phone, but she's gonna share the actual site and everything else that it has to offer. Thank you, Rocio. Um, so before we dive into the toolkit, um, I'm going to give you a quick preview of what we're going to see in there. I know Rocio went in a little bit and showed you bits and pieces, but I'm going to give you a walkthrough. Um, so the toolkit has those six topics for we were talking about for early math. Every single thing in this toolkit is bilingual. So if you see it in English, it's also available in Spanish. And we went through the process of transcreation instead of just translation. So if it's got a cute, snappy title in English, it's going to have that cute, snappy title in Spanish. If it rhymes in English, it's going to rhyme in Spanish. We really wanted the materials in Spanish to reflect the same tone and intention and care that was also in the English. Um, everything I talked to the beginning about the standards alignment. So it's all aligned to the California Preschool Foundation standards, Head Start Early Learning Outcomes, Common Core. And you're going to see so many things in here, videos, games, learning overviews. Um, since we launched this toolkit in May, we have over 150 organizations using it. Everyone from school districts to first five to community-based organizations. And everything in here is downloadable and co-brandable. So you won't see a PBS SoCal logo on anything. We did that intentionally because we know that 
getting materials from another organization with their logo on it can sometimes be a barrier to wanting to use it. So if you're at an organization that has a logo, you are welcome to add your logo to these family math materials. They have the really fun family math logo on them, but we kept our logo off of it so that organizations and individuals would feel um, comfortable using them. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, if someone wouldn't mind throwing in the chat, Rocio, the, the link to the toolkit uh, so that you can click on it if you want to follow mm -hmm. along with me. So I am already logged in. If you haven't created an account with us yet, you will need to do that. I promise it's the only barrier to using the toolkit. Um, so you're going to register and you can connect it to your Google account. You can create a free PBS account if you want one. You can, um, sorry, a little friend right here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you can connect it to your Apple ID. There's all sorts of way that, ways that you can easily log in. And what you'll also notice is in the top corner, you can toggle between English and Spanish. So you can create the entire interface is also available in Spanish. So I'm gonna go back to English. Um, I'm gonna go to the all resources. And this is a really handy guide, um, our Welcome to Family Math guide that talks about the importance of early math, but it also gives information about um, the data that we've been able to collect over the past four years to prove family math's impact. And last fall, we actually did um, some work with the Stanford Center on Early Childhood um, an impact evaluation. And so you see the product of that, which is a theory of impact model at the end here. So hopefully this is useful to you or your organization um, or just even in talking about uh, family math and early math. I wanted to point out the learning goals. So um, if you click here, you see the different learning objectives of each of the different categories. So you can see all six here. Um, and then there's things like social media posts if you wanted templates for that. Um, and a bunch of other resources here. The other thing I wanted to point out, let's say that you're interested in just grabbing all of the resources that are with shapes or all of the resources for counting. You can filter here by zip file and then you can just grab them all. I will give you a warning. It'll probably take a couple minutes to download because there's so many resources for each subject area. Um, but we wanted to make it easy if you just wanted to grab and go everything to do with a single content area. Um, a couple of other things I'll show you while we're in here. Um, I also love the learning overviews. So uh, these talk about the progression of learning about the different content areas and they're bilingual English and Spanish. So the different stages that a child might go through as they learn about patterns, and we have it for each of the content areas. So the different stages of learning to sort. And these could be great to send home with kids. Um, they're a great kind of homeschool connection tool. And then Rocio showed you a lot of our printable games that are on here and the printable activity sheet. So I won't go over those again, but um, you can easily filter by topic. So let's say you really wanted to do a shapes activity and you want an activity, really easy to filter and find what you need. And there's also the search bar if you wanted to search instead. I'm gonna go back to the toolkit landing page for a second because there's another pathway down here. Let's say that you wanted to lead a more formal workshop um, with families or with really anyone, kids can be there too. We have workshop slides and guides that are already created. Of course, feel free to change them and make them your own. But if you go here, you can see for each of our content areas, there is a slide deck and there's a facilitator guide. So in this slide deck, we give you tips on how to set up your workshop, are these gray slides on the side and then we give you the workshop slides and it's a really simple template where families come together they do a little icebreaker about the topics this is the shape game you get to pick the digital game that they play from that website Rocio was showing you so let's say that you want families to um, play the make a card game with Daniel Tiger that talks about shapes as he's making his card 
you can easily copy it and paste it in here. Um, and families can play along on their device. And then you get to choose one of the shape activities that we have. So stick puppets we reviewed earlier. We've also got the shapes mobile. So let's say that you want families to do the shapes mobile. Um, that's your workshop. And then they share out and we have some take home resources. Um, we also created additional slides. Let's say you're not working with kids in this workshop, you're working with just adults. We have demonstration videos about teaching shapes to preschoolers, the learning sequence I was showing you earlier, shapes at home, just a ton of resources packed into these workshop templates. Um, so feel free to dig around in there and see if maybe you want to make a copy of this and change it or use the workshop as it is. Um, one last resource I'd love to point out and go back into the main section of the toolkit um, is the books list, book list and the games list. So we curated a family math book list. And again, we have it in English and in Spanish where we pulled um, books that we love that talk about early math concepts, some more explicitly than others. Um, so um, my shapes, for example, is very clearly a book about all different kinds of shapes. Um, but where's spot? I love that book. I loved it when I was a kid too. You can actually practice spatial words by reading where's spot. Um, and so we created this family math book list and also a games list. So families, if they're interested in playing some PBS kids math games, you can see them all here and the different topics. All right, Rocio, anything I missed? in the toolkit, um, the family math activity book. If you haven't seen this yet, highly recommend this resource. It's a bilingual flip book. So it's English and Spanish in the same file um, and you can print it so that it's um, two in one. And it's a really wonderful activity book for families to take on the go with them um, and has different activities um, for sorting. And then you see the English down here and shapes um, and all six areas. So that's a little tour of the toolkit. Rocio, feel free to jump in if there's something I missed that you wanted to highlight. No, that's great. Um, I just wanted to say this is just a little bit of a taste. Um, I Like I mentioned, there is an invitation for an in-person um, all day training that we're going to be hosting. I'm going to give you the details to that. But thank you, Rosemary, for taking us through uh, such an, a great tour of everything that this site has to offer. There's over 300 resources in there, but we've made our, we've done our best to make it very accessible so that you can use the filters and just go and, and find what you're looking for, or, you know, the most popular items, we put them at the top. All right, I'm going to go back to our presentation. And if there are any questions that are coming up, go ahead and start thinking about what your questions are. Cause if you have the question, most likely somebody else has the question as well. Um, so go ahead and start thinking about your questions. Um, I did want to share with you all just another little teaser of our songs that are coming out. And I should, we already shared with you the lyrics to one of the songs about pattern. And now I want to play for you the little snippet of this song in English and in Spanish and let you know that they're actually, we're launching six songs, one for each of the topics, uh, November 1st. And so if you come to the in-person training, you're going to, you're going to be the first ones among the first ones to hear some of these songs. So I want to play first in English. We're making patterns in the form of beats. We're making patterns. So that repeat. Clap, stomp, clap, stomp. What do you think comes next? Clap, stomp. Stop. Now you know the rest. And in Spanish, of course. Con ritmo, hagamos un patrón. Un patrón de sonidos que se vuelve a repetir. Palmas, pisa. Palmas, pisa. Divina que viene después. Palmas, pisa. Palmas, pisa. Ya resto sabes como es. These songs, ooh. We're 
These songs are so much fun. Our team had an amazing time creating these and making them so intentional and educational and fun for kids to practice uh, the early math skills. And with that, uh, this is just another example of all the resources that are available that you can take home, right? That you, I mean, that you can take and implement in the work that you do from workshops, PDFs, book lists, on, you know, on YouTube, the videos, the printable games, the digital games, we just have so much. And we want to make sure that you feel really good about how you can take these to your community. And with that, we have a few minutes to open it up for questions and answers uh, or thoughts, observations. We welcome all feedback. Uh, so we're definitely open to anything. I'm going to go ahead and check the chat and see. Talia shared the link to the training. Thank you, Socorro. So excited to get this started. Yes, absolutely. Were there any questions that came up? Uh, training? Would you guys ever do the train the trainer on a Saturday? <laughs> yes. Yes. This We're is amazing. I, I wish I can go, but it's a Friday and I don't have enough helpers to be there. So it's it's challenging for me to go to any training in person training during the week so i'll be interested to see if you guys are ever going to plan to do this on a saturday instead you know we're actually doing it on a saturday in spanish on saturday november 4th hmm. but it's the same material so if you're a spanish speaker definitely please come to the spanish one and and, and you prefer a saturday then please please come it's going to be it's going to be really, really great okay. uh, for the English crowd that would like it on a Saturday. I think with QSLA, we can definitely think about potentially in the future offering it on a Saturday, right? Yeah, if there's definitely if there's interest and you would love to attend on a Saturday, please let us know, especially in the evaluation. Um, and then we can put together another day, find another venue and we can offer it again. Um but we would love to do it again. So I know it's going to be exciting. So if you're able uh, to show up on the 27th, um, you'll get to try all the materials, create all the, um, the tool, try all the tools, create the materials that um, Rocio shared. And if there's, if, if, if you can welcome, join me in like giving her a hand, a round of applause, right. For, and show your appreciation to Rosemary and Rocio um, in the chat. Or we're using your emojis, we really appreciate it. But yes, please let us know if you prefer a Saturday. We'd love to hear how much interest there is, and we'll definitely bring it again. And thank you so much for sharing all of this. This is amazing. I like I say, I love math, so I'm very excited. And all these resources is just unbelievable. I really appreciate all of this, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to do this and sharing it with us. Absolutely. Our pleasure. This is our favorite thing to do. Um, thank you. Uh, I still see Marcia Noguera says that she's going to be sharing it with other teachers. Um, and in the chat, Vicky Valenzuela says it has made me look at math differently. And that just fills my heart with joy because that's exactly what we're trying to do. Right. Unfortunately, there there's a uh, that inherent, you know, math negativity that sometimes is inherited, right, from the way that our parents or we had a negative experience that has made us think that, you know, math is scary or math is confusing or math is difficult. And that's what we're trying to flip. So all of those positive memories and experiences that you all mentioned and that love for uh, these early math topics, the way that you all described uh, how you practice these early math skills with your little ones. I mean, that is so promising. That's exactly how we're trying to approach this work is make it fun. Somebody said making it fun. That is the key. Absolutely. Making it fun and making sure that families know that math is everywhere and they can embrace it and they can love it. And that's going to actually be make all the difference for the kids, because if they know how to point out triangles and squares and circles and, Rom, you know, rombos, all of those things. Now, I mean, those are, if we think about it, those are the beginnings. That's the foundation of geometry, right? Once they're in the ninth or 10th grade and they're hitting those more advanced levels of math, they, if they already have the foundation, it's going to be that much more uh, enjoyable and accessible for them. And that's, that's the movement. You are all now part 
of the family math movement, whether you like it or not. We had over 40 participants today. Thank you so, so much for joining on this Monday evening. I just want to express our gratitude on behalf of PBS SoCal. Um, Rosemary, if you have any last uh, uh, last words that you would like to say. A huge thank you. We hope to see you on the 27th or in the future at another uh, training or event. Thank you for being here. It was really fun spending the evening. 